Well, it's certainly among the best kept uh, secrets of the history of the 20th century that an Inquisition uh, which was as severe as uh, in previous centuries that we've been uh, discussing did take place uh, at the time of the Second World War. Just to give you a little background first, in 1929 Benito Mussolini signed the Lateran Treaty with the Pope of the time, Pope Pius XI, officially conceding uh, Vatican Hill to the Pope. In other words, the Vatican to be set up again as a political entity. And the papacy once again became a sovereign civil state. The legal agreement with Mussolini was just the beginning of the uh, Concordat uh, concordats that were to, to be established with many nations, perhaps the most infamous being the one between Pope Pius XII and Adolf Hitler. And the Vatican formed alliances with the following Roman Catholic dictators, among others, Benito Mussolini, Adolf Hitler, Francisco Franco in Spain, Antonio Salazar in Portugal, Juan Perón in Argentina, uh, but the most brutal and bloodthirsty of all of them was Anton Pavlic in Croatia. According to a, a memorandum in the documents of the United States Army's Counterintelligence Corps, dated uh, the 12th of September 1947, agents hunting escaped Nazi war criminals after World War II purposely avoided capturing one man because, to quote the document, his contacts are so high and his present position so compromising to the Vatican that any extradition of the subject would deal a staggering blow to the Roman Catholic Church. The man was Anton Pavlic, head of the new nation-state of Croatia, carved out of Yugoslavia during the war. During Pavlic's four-year reign, he and Roman Catholic prelate Archbishop Alois Stepinac pursued a convert-or-die policy among the 900,000 approximately Greek Orthodox Serbs, Jews and others in Croatia. 200,000 were converted. 700,000 who chose to die were tortured, burned, buried alive or shot after digging their own graves. This appalling persecution was carried out by the Ustashis, including many of the worst, they included many of the worst atrocities of the whole Second World War. Certainly the mutilations were horrific and the savagery was terrible. The Catholic Church did not leave the execution of a, relig a religious war to the secular arm on this occasion. She was there herself, openly ignoring precautions and bolder than she had been for a very long time. Wielding the hatchet or dagger, pulling the trigger, organizing the massacre, the Roman Catholic priesthood became again its own instrument of inquisition. Many of the Ustashi officers were priests or friars who were sworn to fight with dagger or gun for, quote, the triumph of Christ and Croatia. Priests played a prominent role in the closing or takeover of the Serbian Orthodox churches. The seizure of church records and the interrogation of the Serbian Orthodox clergy as well. They also supervised the concentration camps and organized the torture of many of the victims. And this is all happening in the 20th century. French author Edmund Paris, who was born a Roman Catholic, has written a very thorough account of this terrible massacre in his book, Convert or Die. And he wrote, it's difficult for the world to believe that a whole people could be doomed to extermination by a government and religious hierarchy of the 20th century just because it happened
to belong to another ethnical and racial group and had inherited the Christianity of the Byzantium kind instead of of the Roman kind. The world does not in fact know and is, un and is thus unable to understand fully all this background in the Second World War to what happened in the Balkan Wars of the 1990s in Yugoslavia after the Vatican, note the Vatican, led Western nations in recognizing Croatia as an independent sovereign state. And of course, immediately hostilities broke out between the Croats and the Serbs, given this background of what took place in the Second World War. British historian and journalist Andrew Roberts of the Sunday Telegraph expressed su surprise in that newspaper. He wrote, in the present crisis, almost the entire Western media have chosen to champion the Croats. He goes on to ask the question, how are the Serbs expected to react to the decision to adopt the Ustashi's checkered symbol as the Croatian national flag. In Krajina, it takes longer than the 45 minute attention span of today's CNN broadcaster to forget the way Franciscan friars participated in the slaughter of Serbs in Croatian Bo Bosnia. Orthodox Serbs were promised protection if they converted to Catholicism but were then killed after they entered the churches as the priests looked on. The attempt during the Second World War to create the entirely Roman Catholic independent state of Croatia was accompanied by a persecution so ferocious that it is difficult to find a parallel in all of history. The Inquisition applied to the Serbian Orthodox by the Croatian Catholics accounted for 700,000 Serbs tortured and killed in just four years. And of course, we have that state that they wanted in Croatia now. In the year 2000, the Pope asked for forgiveness for the part that the members of the church played in the Inquisition. I remember the time where there was March in the year 2000. The Pope asked for forgiveness for the act of the members of the church that they had done in the service of truth. Now it wasn't the members of the church or individual members of the church who did these things. It was the papacy itself and the popes in particular. Uh, Peter de Rosa had said 80 popes in a row. In my study of going through one after another of popes in the past, as I have studied history, I have seen that I can document at least 75 popes in a row who have upheld torture. And this is historical fact. It was the popes that uh, gave the authority, as we saw Lord Acton said, it was primarily an institution of papal Rome. Even under Isabel and for Ferdinand in Spain under the famous Spanish Inquisition, it was still under the papal inquisitors that the authority came and that the devices of the tortures were given by papal Rome. So for the Pope to apologize that it was somehow members of the church, this is a total mock. Uh, apology because it was papal Rome that did the horrific deeds for all these centuries and papal Rome has not apologized and uh, the sin remains and the same doctrines that they held then they hold today they hold through salvation through sacramental system uh, as they did at the time of the Inquisition and they still hold to a type of sacramentalism 
by which a person looks to the communion bread that it can sanctify you. It is not any physical thing that sanctifies. It is the righteousness of Christ Jesus received by faith under the conviction of the Holy Spirit by which a person becomes a Bible believer. As the Roman Catholic Church continues to embrace the increasingly popular ecumenical movement across the world, it would be wise for all of us, and especially Bible believers, to remember the lessons of history and to remain steadfast in our faith.